Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. This is Papa Bale. And we're looking at the pulse motor, pulse motor generator, and what we can do with that exactly. Uh, apparently it's not as much as I thought when I hooked up the light to this new pulse motor. Um, it did not it actually slowed the pulse motor down. I'm trying to figure out why that is. I'm thinking about some maybe rebound interference, some kind of interference where it lit the coils up and made them, you know, magnetic. One fifty. One fifty five. One sixty. One sixty five. We're at one sixty three. Oh no, we just dropped. Okay, one sixty four, one sixty five. That is so cool. 165 AC volts but we see we don't need that many uh, we need 110 to 120 we're gonna get another power supply like this we're gonna hook it up to our coil array we're gonna get whatever diodes and transistors resistors capacitors whatever we need to make that function properly and then we're going to turn the power supply off and we're going to see if those coils can generate enough power to lit the power supply and that power supply will then in turn uh, spin the rotor and the cycle should continue now this is why I think I might need to break it down into three, three, and three, and three, or break it into threes, or wait a minute, nine, three, three, and three. Well, uh, we're gonna have to break it down for, you know, we gotta have coils for this power supply and then we either have a switch where we switch it over from that power supply to the other power supply for the same three coils or we have three other coils uh, hooked to the other power supply which would leave six coils to generate Oh, I might end up doing the other magnets though because I'm just dying to see I just don't think the read switch will work or proximity switch I don't know if anything will work with that much magnetism so close together I mean this this read switch has barely got enough room between the magnets to uh, shut off you know so Yeah, we got options now. And then we either have the power supply light up the coils and try to perpetuate the motion that way, or we can light up a, a, a motor like that one. And we could spin the shaft that way. But it's, it's got to make sense, you know. I believe the power supply is going to be the best way. I mean, this, this little sucker right here is kind of a power supply, but, you, you know, it's not enough 
Gotta have something like this, or maybe something like that hooked up to something like this. But anyway, that's gonna be awesome. I got two bridge rectifiers AC to DC coming, if I wanna do that. So that, that's another option, just change it all to DC. I have two capacitors on hand. I don't know, it's too hard to read them. They're not clearly printed, so it's a, whatever. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, also, I shortened the top of the shaft by about two or three inches. And now it's coming out the bottom. So there's lots of stability in this new rotor. It's nice and nice and stable, nice and sturdy. There's uh let me explain the layers. The bottom of the shaft goes into a bearing that's just just sitting there. It's not hooked to anything except the shaft. And that's leaning on two discs which have bearings in the center, which are more stable than the single one, but it goes through the two bearings. So the one bearing and the two bearings, so there's three bearings, and it goes through the, the two sheets of pegboard, through a flange, which is that right there, a coupler flange, which is screwed in to the bottom of the pegboard like that except just flip it over okay without a without a nut in it and we're not trying to clamp it down there we're just trying to stabilize it even more and even with all that friction man you're going to need some voltage to, to turn this thing but once you get it It's good. It's a good thing to have. <clears throat> All right. So, thank you very much. Please subscribe. Have a nice day. And peace out.